The first thing I wish grad students knew is that everyone in academia is winging it in their own way. Like, when you first enter a PhD, you feel like you're lost. You feel like there's all these things you don't know, and you slowly sort of fill in those gaps. Now, the thing is, no matter where you in academia, there are always gaps that you are just, like, winging. You are just flying by the seam of your pants because you really don't know what you're doing, but you just know you need to do something. And I think as you get further up the PhD, academia chain, you really start to understand, like, how to make quick decisions. That's all really it is. Winging it, like, not knowing where to go, is part of the academic process, but you do get better at just making quick decisions. And sometimes, early on in a PhD, students can look at their supervisor and go, wow, they know exactly what they're doing. But unfortunately, uh, they do not know what they're doing, and they are just better at making it sound like they know just by making quick decisions. So, there we are, there's the first thing. Everyone's lost in their own way, just wandering through the academic landscape. So, as you sort of like make your way towards becoming a professor, you just learn those little tricks that are kind of like little mind Jedi tricks to convince people you know what you're doing, when in fact, you really have no idea. Sometimes you hit, sometimes you miss, but people always remember the hits and they go, wow, that person's clever. Now, don't get me wrong, they do kind of uh, get better at judging what to do and not what to do, but there's always a blind spot that they're winging. So don't worry about feeling like that early on, because it doesn't change. Now, here's an important one. Not all peer-reviewed papers are telling you the full truth. Now, the thing about sort of the peer review process is that it's the best process we currently have, but that doesn't mean it's perfect. When you produce a peer reviewed paper and publish it in a journal, you are kind of just relying on other experts in the field to sort of look over your results. And some people outright lie, some people sort of like only do an experiment one or two times and then sort of like don't really mention that it only worked one or two times and then people just assume it always works. And there are loads of just biases in those papers. The peer review process is the best we have at trying to sort of separate out the rubbish stuff from the good stuff. And it's not always easy because there are a lot of people trying to game the system. The academic system is about trying to get as many peer reviewed papers as humanly possible in a short period of time. And that means that, uh, you know, quality does suffer and uh, the peer review process doesn't weed out all of the rubbish ones. So as you are reading a paper, don't just take it on face value. You really need to sort of turn on and switch on that uh, skeptical mindset and start thinking about the size of the data set. You know, if there's any limitations, what would you do differently? Is it actually an appropriate experiment for the conclusions they're making? And that's all part of learning how to become an academic academic, it's about being able to sort of like quickly synthesize and understand the limitations of what you're reading because don't take things on face value. And uh, over time though, the peer review process tends to work because if something is like groundbreaking and there's lies in it, don't worry, people find out very, very quickly. Another thing I wish grad students knew is that you don't have to know where you're going. Now, don't worry, throughout any sort of academic career, through, throughout any sort of research process, you kind of have like, you know, a guiding star, but you don't know if that light in the distance is a star, a lighthouse, an LED light, another sun, whatever it is. You just know that you're kind of heading that direction and you don't need to know what's over there. It's important that you understand the process of research as, you know, stumbling in the dark with your hands out and then you grab onto something and you go, oh, there's something there and you kind of like carry on down that path. And uh, stumbling around in the dark in academia is something that you initially feel very uncomfortable with, but then it gets easier and easier as you realize that like the world will tell you where you need to go in your research. You just need to do the preliminary work to find out what will work and not work. It's kind of like some sort of, uh, you know, hippie advice, like the world, the universe will guide you. And it kind of is like that, but in a less of a hippie way, more of like a, a, a horrible academic uh, bossy way. But just keep going. You don't need to know where you're going. You just need to put one foot in front of the other during your research kind of uh, process and you'll figure it out. 
just keep heading towards that light in the distance, whatever it is, and uh, you'll find something interesting. I'm sure of it. Another thing I wish grad students knew is that no one cares about your undergraduate anymore. That was one thing that was really sort of surprising to me, is that throughout my academic career, once you kind of get past a certain gate or a hurdle, then the next step is just like, oh yeah, this person's in our pen now, so we don't really care about what they did before. Grades only open up the gateway to academia. They don't really dictate your success, or if anyone really cares about how clever you are. You know, in an undergraduate, you can get good at gaming academia by being good at exams. The game in grad school and in your PhD or research or masters is just completely different. It does not rely on you being clever. There's a part of it, don't get me wrong, but it really relies on you doing work and there's no point in going on with it, in with a chip on your shoulder being like, well, I'm pretty clever I have you know because I can assure you if you go in like that, Academia has a way of knocking you down a peg or two very quickly, so stay humble. There's lots of clever people in academia, and also there are a lot of people that, you know, don't consider themselves particularly clever in academia that do incredibly well anyway. So, just remember that. No one cares about your grades. Let's just look forward. Let's all work together. And also, there's no ranking here. You know, PhD students with, uh, with uh, you know, great grades beforehand, you're all equal. Equal PhD students, equal master's students. Now, it's about working together to get your research done. And your journey is your own. There's no comparing your journey to others. So, be humble and move forward. Grades mean nothing. One thing I wish someone had told me before starting my PhD is that I should save absolutely everything. Now, when I first started my PhD, back in the old days when there was no cloud computing, or at least cheap cloud computing, um, you just saved everything on a hard drive and you backed that up regularly, like an external hard drive. Now, I really recommend that you sort of save everything you do, every graph, every presentation, every conference thing, every bit of analysis you do, you push save and you push it into a folder in your uh, cloud drive or your external hard drive. Now, the thing about this is I have found that no matter where you are in the future, there's always that one thing that you're like, oh, I did this graph, I, I need to go back and find it. And having a, a good record of everything you've produced, even if it doesn't make it into a paper, a conference presentation, or even a weekly seminar or meeting that you've done with your supervisor, just keep it in a folder somewhere. Because I can guarantee you, you'll be going back to your old data a lot more than you think you will, especially when it comes to writing up, especially when it comes to answering those questions that pop up later on. So keep a really good record record of all of the stuff you do, actually store it, become a data hoarder of everything you produce, don't delete anything, and uh, it will pay off because there's always that one thing that you want to go and find. The last thing I wish grad students knew was that some people are assholes for no reason. Academia, like everywhere else in the world, has its fair share of assholes, and it's not anything about you really, it's all about them. Maybe they feel insecure about something. Maybe they're not happy. And sometimes people are just assholes in academia because they can be, it's like a power play. And the problem is, is that if someone's an asshole to you, you internalize that. You start thinking like, oh, there's something wrong with me. Maybe I'm not clever enough. And really, they're just being assholes to everyone. It's not personal. Now, not that, that being said, like not only are there just assholes, there's also really, really nice people. So. Get advice from the nice people. Hang out more often with the nice people. When an asshole is around, it brings everyone down and uh, they do just kind of have a habit of popping up when you feel at your worst. So, assholes are everywhere. If someone's an asshole, just pity them. Just be like, obviously you cannot control whatever's going on in your life and you need to take it out on those around you. And uh, that's just the nature of academia as well. They are around everywhere. I've seen my fair share of assholes, and unfortunately, sometimes they are rewarded by the system by being more successful, getting promotions, getting collaborations, but try to minimize your exposure to them and your life will be much nicer in grad school during your PhD, masters or whatever it is. So, assholes be assholes. <laughs> 
So there we are. There's everything I wish grad students knew as a PhD myself. So let me know in the comments what you would add. It is a very challenging world out there. So let's help each other. Put your stuff in the comments so that we can all navigate this weird academic world together. And go check out my newsletter. I'll put a link in the description. And when you sign up, you'll get five exclusive emails completely for free, including stuff like how to write the perfect abstract, um, the perfect PhD's daily schedule, the podcast I've been on, and much more. And also, I've got academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got my two eBooks, the PhD Survival Guide and the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit. And they're also available for a cheap bundle price as well and I'll see you in the next video.